Thank you, Senator Wyden, and thanks to the committee members. And Ms. Jones, as a, as a Richmond resident like you, I really appreciate your testimony. And let me just read for the record again something you read, but I don't want it to pass unnoticed. Student loan debt has been the driving force of my decisions for the last eight years of my life, and according to my current repayment plan, it is projected to be for the next 25 years of my life, well into the years for which I'd be planning for retirement. That's a powerful statement. That's a powerful statement. I'd like to be a student in your class because somebody who wants to be a teacher as much as you do, somebody who's been willing to take on your shoulders that much debt and still fight to achieve your dream of being a teacher, somebody who's willing to move halfway across the country to get a master's degree, you are going to be, I know you are, and are going to be one fantastic teacher. So I, I thank you for your commitment. Um, I, I really want to focus on the cost side of this equation, as, as Dr. Vetter did. Um, bringing down the cost of higher education. I, I, I support so many of the issues on loans, the ability to refinance a student loan, but I really am focused on these cost issues. And I think we've probably done a disservice to students and their families by not laying out in a more clear fashion as a public policy matter, lower cost ways to get the kinds of skills or degrees that you need to succeed. So for example, one kind of skill you can get is not a college degree, but a license or a professional credential. The Georgetown Workforce Center says that 27% of young wor workers with license or certificates earn more than those with bachelor's degrees. It's not that you don't get education after high school, but sometimes the right education is an American Welding Society certificate. My dad was a welder. Um, a Cisco Systems Administrator certificate. Um, I don't think we, we coach and counsel our young people that there's ways to get the credentials to enable you to work that aren't the same as higher ed degrees. And most of our financial aid policies, you know, you can't use, for example, military tuition assistance benefits, $4,500 a year to active duty military for college or community college courses. You can't use those benefits to pay a $300 certification exam. It's foolish. Um, second, we have dual enrollment possibilities for students, and more and more states are embracing the notion that students, while they're in high school, should be able to get dual enrollment credits. You can't use Pell Grant credits, you can't use the current Pell Grant program to pay for college credits that you can obtain for a really cheap cost in high school at dual enrollment. That's a cheaper way to get college credit. I was able to graduate from college in three years because of dual enrollment. And it was enormously helpful to my family. My family couldn't afford the colleges I got into when I first applied, and they had to tell me when everybody else was celebrating their colleges, you're going to have to go talk your way into someplace late because everywhere that accepted you is too expensive for us. But dual enrollment is a way to reduce college costs. AP credits are a way to reduce college costs. Two plus two programs. Ms. Jones, you know, a lot of students now today, this wasn't happening so much for me, but a lot of students now in your shoes are going to J. Sargent Reynolds for two years and then going to VCU. And when they do that, their total cost shrinks. But for them to do that, somebody's had to sit down with them and counsel them about this as a, as a path. You can get a four-year degree from the same college you did, and it will be 25 or 30 percent cheaper if you start at the local community college. What this tells me is um, I, I am concerned about debt, but I'm, I'm probably most concerned most concerned about this co college cost issue. And I do think there are already a number of pathways for people to get college degrees or the credentials and certificates uh, that will enable them to work, but we have an obligation to provide better information. Um, and we also have an obligation to provide policies that don't discourage or treat as sort of second class education some of the things like the professional cer certificates and certifications. Um, I would like to ask both uh, Mr. Chopra and Dr. Vetter, in terms of the information provision, I know Dr. Vetter, you have some concerns about the grading system, and I do too, because I think grades could obscure more than they reveal in terms of yeah. quality. But in terms of providing uh, students and parents with information earlier in their lives so they can make decisions, um, what more can we do at the federal level using the, le the leverage of the investment we make? Well, one of the things that we have noted uh, is that it's also very difficult to even compute what the cost, true cost of college is for many families. Not only uh, do tuitions change from year to year, but also it's a challenge to project what your monthly payment will be 
when you take on a certain amount of debt this year. So just like we saw in the mortgage market where interest rates might reset or conditions change, people really are rolling the dice. The CFPB has created a number of tools to assist with this, but of course there can be more that should be done.